When was the last time you played with Winter's Gill? As I'll admit, this exotic is powerful to use, but god damn does it suck to proc. You only get 5 seconds to use this exotic and it will refresh itself for each melee pull off, which is great. However, this makes the exotic limited to up close milleing only, and nothing else. As you can tell, 5 seconds is nothing and although the amount of damage you get is pretty damn high, you're not able to make full use of this in time. But do not fret, as I've come up with a simple build around this, and something you guys will enjoy. It's not going to fix the exotic itself, but it's going to allow you to do some effective damage while you're timing your buffs, so you can make full use of them. It works and it doesn't work, it's kind of a 50-50 type of build, but I'll show you exactly what I mean. But you know what else hasn't become a relic of his past deeds? This channel right here. So if you enjoyed the video then I'd really appreciate a like, a sub and for you to turn your notification as it goes a long way for me. So for the subclass, we'll be using Daybreak as that's the best offensive super to use. Now aspects and fragments wise, we'll need to focus on supporting your melee as high as possible so we can proc them constantly. For example, a charge of flames allows solar grenades to last longer and emit blobs of lava around the perimeter. You'll then want heat rises where you can hover in the air for longer and glide and will grant melee energy while in the air. For fragments, you want ember of torches where powered melee hits against combatants make you and your allies radiant. Ember of Blistering, where defeating combatants with solar ignition grants grenade energy back. Ember of Wonder, where rapidly defeating target solar ignition generates orbs of power. And Ember of Searing, where scorched targets grant melee energy back. For stats, you want 50 in Discipline, 100 in Strength, and 70 in Resilience. As we are playing up close and personal, your Resilience and Strength stat are the two key areas that will be fully allowing you to play as reckless as possible. Once you get your abilities up, you can then proc your melee at a further distance and then go from there. A key mod to have are Elemental Charge so you can become charged with light via wells collected, a melee well maker for creating wells via charged wells, well of life for increased health regen, radiant light for a plus 20 in strength, and heavy handed where being charged with light will give you half your melee back upon using your charged melee. Similar to how we last did our build, the difference here is that we'll focus on keeping the exotic afloat to pull off some hefty damage in the mean run. Ideally, if I'm not able to keep the Winter's Guild's damage buff going through normal melee, I can instead rely on the charged melee instead and get the above mods buffs active so I can instantly get a full melee back and then with a snap of my fingers I can eliminate half the population of the tower. Thanos jokes aside, you should be able to build up your damage smoothly as long as the enemies keep coming and then you can use your charge mini for an even more devastating blow. It works great when you want it to, but it can also be dangerous at times if you're not careful. Weaponry will keep this nice and simple. For a primary I have the Traveller's Chosen so I can get an easy source of getting my abilities back quickly in dire need. It's also useful to have a sidearm in hand as you can use this to wing your combatants and proc say one well, of Ions and Ochel while making it quickly if need be, but this is only if you're not going to go with the mods that I have shown. Alternatively, any sidearm with Wellspring on it is also useful to use, as truth be told you're not going to be using your weapons a lot here. For secondary we have the Callus Mini Tool with Slideways Surrounded and the Origin Perk 2XS which grants us bonuses in discipline and strength as long as we have a full super, which is great for weapon and build in mind, but in general is useful for ad clearing at how fast it's capable of doing this. It also comes as a lightweight frame, so equipping it will allow you to zoom past combatants and get your buffs in fast and quickly. I've always, always loved this weapon, and I'm extremely happy to see it come back compared to any of the other SMGs as this is probably the best feeling one to ever use in both PvE and PvP in general. For Heavy, we have Cataclysm, with successful warm up and bait switch. Although Rocket Launcher would be more suited, you can get a faster DPS via your Heavy with the setup in mind, and Rocket Ammo is kind of limited at times compared to Linear's with a higher pull to offer. I don't think there is a specific Heavy to use here as it's more down to the user, but do be careful with anything explosive wise. For the stats, you want to invest heavily in melee alone, as this will be the key in terms of getting your melee up and ready when needed. The thing about Winter's Guild is that the timer behind it is very short, so you need to either time your shots so you can get the damage buff procced on time, or you're going to need to wait it out and get your buffs up and ready before proceeding, and both of these have their pros and cons. Now for the stat alone, I would recommend you aim for at least 100 so the passive cooldown for this area is relatively fast. 
From here, I then recommend you add on the Invigoration mod for reduced mini cooldown on Orbs of Power Collected, Absolution for all ability cooldown from Orbs of Power Collected, and Outreach for even more mini cooldown upon using your class ability. All of these alongside Heavy Handed should be enough to make your charge mini come back one after another alongside your Heat Rises aspect. For the rest of the stats, you can then put some points into your Resilience since that now has been updated. At Tier 7, I can get around 20% damage reduction and then stack this with Protective Light or Well Tenacity for even more damage reduction. This will be important to take note of as you will be taking quite a bit of damage while in melee range, so it's wise to prepare for the situation in case. I would recommend you boost your recovery and discipline as well, although except on recovery, discipline can be left at around 50 since it won't be used as much. Left otherwise, we have Kinetic Siphon for creating orbs of power via kinetic weapons and Harmonic Siphon which allows us to create orbs of power via matching elemental weapons. Now as we have this bit covered, here are the mods all compiled onto the list for quick viewing. For Head we have Strength, Harmonic Siphon, Kinetic Siphon, the Elemental Charge mod. Arm we have Strength from Mini Wellmaker mod. Chest we have Strength, Arm of the Dying Sun, Cacus of Damna, a Well of Life mod. Leg we have Resilience, Invigoration, Absolution, Radiant Light mod. Bond we have Maya Discipline, Outreach, and Heavy Handed mod. As similar to the Sunbraces build, Instead of throwing endless waves of grenades, you'll be throwing endless waves of melee instead. Now imagine, here you are, facing a wave of combatants coming at you, and instead of taking them on with guns or grenades, you instead slap them, and then escalate the violence from there. I don't think we have seen this level of melee fun for Warlocks for quite a while, as the next best thing will be Closer Arankara, which just gives you two melees instead of one. The thought of Winter's Gill slowly making a return back in game should tell you everything about how Sailor 3.0 works and how some parts of it is both fun to mess around with, but also fails in some aspects. Winter's Gill has never been updated in a very long time, and with how short its perks work, I can see why a lot of people don't ever want to touch it until Bungie does something about it. Now the following build can work, and as shown, as long as you are charged with light and stay in the air while you melee, then you should be able to get your full melee back instantly. You can probably do this 3 to 4 times back to back before you then need to rearm yourself, but with how the build plays out, you can do this easily. A 1 melee should be enough to create a well on demand, and this here will give you the necessary buff needed to snap away. Winter's Gills damage stack goes up from 1 to 5, with 1 being 130%, 2 being 260%, 3 being 390%, 4 being 520%, and 5 being 650% damage increase, which is a lot against mages the ultras. Now at best you'll probably proc 1 to 3 at most unless you start to melee like crazy, and then use your charge melee. If you reach number 5 though, you can actually one shot a legend tier champion as long as they are stunned. It can also do some pretty good damage against bosses as well. It's a bit tight though to pull off, which is why the exotic in name is very risky to use for such a high reward. It could potentially even place an ultra combatant into finisher mode on master content if timed right, but once again this is very very risky to use and pull off. With how this build is, I have designed it to the best of my ability to keep the perks float, but until Bungie increases the time duration of a melee to at least 10 seconds, you're always going to be missing the mark here and there. But if you're after a melee build where you'll decimate literally everyone in one final snap, then please take note, find a nearby lost sector, and basically snap away. So if you enjoyed the video, then please leave a like and a sub, and also follow me on Twitter to keep up date with Destiny content if you dig that type of stuff, link is down below. Once again, thanks for stopping by, and I'll see you all in the next one.